Welcome to Variant Limits, the first in a four-part series of educational experiences for calculus students. Variant brings calculus to life by transforming abstract ideas into creative and visual challenges. As an explorer on a planet governed by calculus principles, students will overcome obstacles by applying skills and concepts learned in class. This video provides a deeper look into the calculus concepts within each zone or level and will demonstrate a sample of the calculus puzzle students will encounter while playing Variant Limits. When students first enter the game, they're introduced to Equa, the game's player character. Equa wakes up in an environment unfamiliar to both her and the player, giving students a chance to explore and learn basic navigation and keyboard controls. Students must complete a series of calculus puzzles in each zone to repair technology, restore power, and save the planet. Students are also given the option to explore the world and gain additional narrative elements as they play through the game. External to the game, students and instructors can access game analytics and progress at portal.triceum.com. Variant Limits is broken into four zones or levels that are explored sequentially. Within Zone 1, students gain competencies related to the nature of points, including limits from the left, from the right, or from both sides. Zone 2 moves on to the limits of functions and limit laws for combining functions. Zone 3 takes the principles and content of Zone 2 a step further. It requires students to relate continuity to limits when combining functions and introduces the Intermediate Value Theorem. In Zone 4, students continue to build on prior game competencies and are introduced to asymptotes. The zone begins by teaching the players the basic mechanics. Orbs with the shading on the left represents a point of interest that has a limit from the left. As the player continues into the zone, they are introduced to right-sided orbs, which represent a point of interest that has a limit from the right. Lastly, students are introduced to value orbs, which represent a point of interest that has a value achieved by the function. As you can see, a puzzle with the same graph is repeated during the puzzle progression for each of the org types to provide context to the student. As the zone progresses, students are required to create and edit orbs instead of using prescribed orbs for each puzzle. At this stage of the game, students must construct orbs that have all of the properties of a point of interest, combining left, right, and value orbs as needed. Thus, the student must fully describe all points of interest on the graph. The final puzzle in the zone is called an assessment puzzle, which has an additional layer of challenge. When incorrect orbs are placed, they do not automatically get pushed back into the orb bin. Instead, students must create and place all 17 points of interest correctly to move on to zone two. In Zone 2, players apply the knowledge learned in Zone 1 to manipulate the environment using a variety of limit laws. The functions are linked to objects in the game world. Students must select an input and output type, value, limit from left, limit from right, limit from both sides, that achieves the desired result. After some preliminary puzzles introducing the Zone 2 interface, the slider, the limit selector, as well as the in-game desired outputs, students arrive at Puzzle 5. This puzzle requires students to find a result of 2 as represented in-world. As the input slider approaches 5, the player notices that the output gets closer and closer to 2. However, when the limit selector is set to F of A and the input is 5, the output jumps to 4. On the other hand, when the input is set to 7.5 and the limit selector is set to F of A, the output does not exist. Thus, the player must use the limit selector to choose which limit type provides a correct answer. This puzzle has several correct answers. The first is an input of 5 and an output type of a limit from the left. The other solutions are the limits approaching 7.5. 
Either answer extends the bridge, allowing the player to progress. This puzzle represents a locking mechanism used throughout zones 2, 3, and 4, requiring students to use limits for both functions to align the notches and open the lock. To solve this puzzle, the player must evaluate both functions f of x and g of x using the same input and output type. As the player moves the input slider, the functions f of x and g of x control the rotation of the lock plates. When the player evaluates these functions, they can use an input of 6 and an output type of a limit from the right to align the locking mechanism, creating a path. Other puzzles in the game require students to evaluate three functions simultaneously. This is a sample puzzle that represents the addition limit law by adding the lengths of f of x and g of x in the game world. In this puzzle, students must manipulate the sum of the functions by evaluating each function and adding their result to obtain a total of two. Similarly, we give the students several puzzles with the division of functions that teach the division limit law. In this case, the result is one half. The puzzle doesn't care about the values of f of x and g of x, only that g of x is non-zero and that their quotient is the required slope. Division is represented by f of x as the height and g of x as the base of a right triangle, with the puzzle beam following the slope of the triangle given by the quotient. Finally, we teach the multiplication limit law by requiring students to solve the puzzles using the product of two functions. Multiplication is represented as an auto-targeting system which connects to a node with the given product. Like the previous limit law puzzles, students only see the individual functions, not their product, sum, or quotient. The assessment puzzle in Zone 2 requires students to use the addition, multiplication, and quotient limit laws. Again, the puzzle at the end of each zone is more complex and a deeper understanding of the content is needed to solve this puzzle more so than others within the zone. As students play through Zone 3, they continue to practice limit laws and are also introduced to continuity or lack thereof when combining functions. In this sample puzzle, students need to use the patch limiter functionality to successfully solve the puzzle for the correct output. Here, the graph shows f of x and g of x, and students need to describe the product of f of x and g of x by predicting the outcome. In the orb trays along the bottom, students add and edit orbs. Using the orbs, they indicate whether the combined function achieves a value at that input and whether it has limits from the left and the right. The orbs must be lined up correctly from highest value to lowest value at each input. For the specific puzzle, the product must be evaluated at two inputs. Once the patch limiter is solved, students can select between two operators, multiplication or division, to solve the main puzzle for the desired outcome, either 0.5 or 1 displayed within the game environment. As in this example, many of the Zone 3 puzzles require multiple solutions on the same math instance. Within Zone 3, the Intermediate Value Theorem is represented with three sets of puzzle cubes. In each, the student is given a series of six functions with a value to be obtained and three obscured intervals. To solve the cube, students must select the interval that contains the desired value by looking at the values at the start and end of each interval. The assessment puzzle tests the Intermediate Value Theorem over several values and intervals for the same function. The Zone 3 assessment puzzle requires students to apply the concepts from the Intermediate Value Theorem cubes and the patch limiters to successfully complete the zone and move to Zone 4, the final level of variant limits. In Zone 4, students apply their knowledge of limits to address infinite limits. Once students are introduced to the zone's mechanics in the first puzzle, the second puzzle requires students to differentiate between the left asymptote to negative infinity and the right asymptote to positive infinity as x approaches 3. Here, students select orbs with appropriate values and place them in the slots that indicate the limit from the right and the limit from the left. 
While Zone 4 is focused on infinite limits and limits at infinity, the game continues to reinforce concepts from previous zones. In this puzzle, students must not only identify the direction of the asymptotes correctly, they must also give the value of the two-sided limit as x approaches zero. Zone 4 includes examples of oscillators, both at a finite input and as asymptotic behavior. This puzzle includes both a growing and a shrinking oscillation to highlight the difference in behavior. The next puzzle asks students to take limits at a finite input as well as examine the asymptotic behavior to contrast these ideas. In the final puzzle in this detailed puzzle demo, students must differentiate between several types of behavior in order to strengthen the contrast between them. When students complete the Zone 4 assessment puzzle, they'll uncover the end of the story. Variant Limits is transforming calculus education through direct interaction and instant feedback in an immersive 3D game environment. Via the online portal, Triceum also provides instructor and student dashboards with real-time game analytics that personalize and optimize the student experience. Give your students an opportunity to take a more active role in the learning process by using a game which engages them like no other learning tool. Reach out to the Triceum team now to learn more about incorporating variant limits into your classroom and experience the power of play.